Now, from WNYA My 4, this is UAlbany Football Weekly, presented by Mohawk Honda. And a very good morning, everybody, and welcome to UAlbany Football Weekly and the start of CAA Conference play. The Great Danes will host William and Mary this afternoon at 3:30 uh, on Tom and Mary Casey Stadium on Bob Ford Field. Let's go back to last Saturday to start UAlbany with a good opportunity to bounce back from the Monmouth loss on Hometown Heroes Day with special helmets honoring military members and first responders. That group also includes former linebacker Nate Hatalski from Mechanicville, who became a state trooper this summer. New Albany basketball's Antonio Rizzuto was honored before kickoff. He's a volunteer firefighter in addition to being a guard on Will Brown's team. The head coach said this was a must win, and Donovan McDonald comes out with a sense of urgency, takes the opening kickoff back 98 yards for the touchdown. He's got that uh, sprinter speed and gets to show it off right here to start the game off. Jeff Undercuffler tied two program records against Monmouth, 398 yards and four touchdowns and off the play action. Finds Carl Mofor wide open over the middle. Mofor also runs for a career high 135 yards. U Albany takes a 22 0 lead into the locker room at halftime under Cuffler to LJ Westneski, who powers his way through tacklers into the end zone. Under Cuffler and Jawan Green have developed one heck of a relationship. Two plays after he misses Green on the same play. Under Cuffler goes right back to him. Big throw and catch, and U Albany rolls 36 7. The Danes are now two and two. I thought we were really ready to play. Um, there, there's an energy that is in a locker room when you walk in. Sometimes you just feel really good. They had it today. Um, not all, you know, it's it's not always there, and sometimes you, you try to generate it. But they were ready to play. There wasn't much to say, and they came out and played a really good football game. And it just brings a different type of energy out from everybody to see the first play go for six. Like everybody just juiced up and ready to go after that. I really wouldn't say that we're a straight passing team. I mean, because when we get the the, uh, the football moving on the ground like we did today, you know, that, that certainly opens up the uh, pass game. And, and right now, that's just something to, uh, to build off. Hey, no doubt a good win, Coach. Good to see you again. Roger, how are you? I'm good. Congrats. Thank you. And was that the most complete game you've played so far this season? Far and away. I mean, it's, a, it's the most complete game we've played for some time, and I think um, we can continue. We're trying to build to this. I think quarterback has a lot to do with it. You yeah. know, we're moving the sticks. We're scoring some points. It's taking some pressure off the defense, and uh, it's really nice to see the special teams jump up and make a big play. So all in all, it was a really great all-around football game for us. Welcome back to you, Albany Football Weekly here on My4, presented by Mohawk Honda. A lot of these players will tell you when they decided to come to UA, it's because of the family atmosphere. For two of these players on this Great Danes team, it's actually family. No, literally. He's like, yeah, we got 12 extra flexes, so we're going to like get them painted up and then just give them to all you guys. We've always been really, really close, and I feel like I always, I always had a feeling he was going to come here, and I really pushed for it. <laughs> There aren't many kids who would encourage their younger brother to follow them to college. But Tristan Sokash Minnick did just that, and his younger brother Stephen came along two years later. He was chatting in my ear the whole time, trying to me get to get me here. He knew how special it was here, and he wanted me to be able to experience that. Stephen followed his older brother from Pennsylvania to U Albany. Tristan is the Danes' starting long snapper as a junior, and Steven is a freshman, and you guessed it, also a long snapper. Well, our middle school coach, we were doing special teams, and he just asked for a long snapper, and Tristan's like, yeah, I could do it. I went to camps for it, uh, Rubio long snapping camps I went to, and it worked out. So I ended up really liking it. Are you ready? I thought to myself, I was like, if he could do it, I could do it. And there's the competitiveness you see among siblings. Both brothers played on the offensive and defensive lines as well in high school, but now are specializing at long snapping, which is something of an art. Are you ready? What makes a good long snapper? Um, accuracy, speed, and when you're snapping the ball to a punter, you want the ball like right here every time. It's a lot of technique, a lot of technique and form. When you're snapping, your legs and your hands have to be in unison. And just like the way you put your hands on the ball, that, ha that affects the spin. The guys are certainly competitive when it comes to snapping, but as you would expect with brothers, they're also happy to make one another better. It's a good connection. You know, I know that when I'm snapping, if I do something wrong, he'll tell me what I'm doing wrong and try to, try to figure it out. And I try to do the same thing for him, you know, like we, we just kind of balance each other out. I want to help him be the best football player he can be, so I try to do that every day on the field. 
even if that puts a little more pressure on him for the starting job. If he can fill that role when I'm gone or even when I'm here, I'd be super proud of that, and I, I would love to help him out along the way. That's spoken like a true brother right there. Tristan and Steven have another younger brother, Blaze. He's also a long snapper, and I wonder if we'll see him in purple and gold someday, possibly. Special thanks to Chief Photographer Matt Soriano for shooting and editing that piece. And welcome back. I'm Roger Wyland. Uh, you are watching U Albany Football Weekly here on My Four. And Sean Kennedy is a red shirt senior from Staten Island. He's been patiently waiting to wear the mic really for the second time in his U Albany career. And this morning, he gets that second chance. And now, U Albany Football Weekly Mike Dot. I got a mic on, so don't say anything and I'll get you in trouble. Just tell me that really messed up joke you had about Coach Catuso. Just a heads up, everybody. I am wearing a wire, so I don't gonna say anything that's going to get you cut. Yeah, this is Don the Torpedo Leo. Southern California. <laughs> you're out here, you're going to get a chance on TV. You're just going to hit the bag that soft. He stinks. Oh, okay. Cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> Clinic, Geneva. Clinic. Your first tag of the year, buddy. Welcome back. Probably shouldn't have hit you on a bad shoulder, but whatever. We got the camera, so you got to put that away. <laughs> There's children who watch this show. You can't have that thing hanging out. Coach, you got him coming here and I'm going down, right? So I'm coming here, he's coming here, and we'll pull him for him. Okie dokie, then. Here we go. Yes, I'm mic'd up. Don't say anything dumb. You got to put on a happy face for people, you know? <laughs> I just talk like an idiot, and they think it's funny. I might need some subtitles. The R-rated version will be available. Later. See him celebrate a touchdown and get a penalty for it because, you know, he's never been there before. I'm the funniest guy. Not even close. Like, by far. No one laughs at your jokes. My jokes though. are hilarious. They're awful. Rock man! What's up, brother? I'm having too much fun. Carl, so are you done messing around in the weight room? What are you talking Are you going to start working hard again or are you just going to be lazy? Yo, follow me on Twitter at the law underscore 86. I used to play guard back out there, you know? I know, I saw it. <laughs> I stunk at it. That was great work. Thanks for just getting hit for no reason. Thank you, thank you. Could have been better. I don't know if it could have been better. That was really good. You get me in trouble See, letting you, him do it you, two years in a row. I, I know. You could tell he wanted to wear that mic again. He would wear it every day if you let him. <laughs> he, but he's, uh, he's... He's got to ask you first, I guess, huh? No, you were supposed to ask me first, and you just kind of went over <laughs> my head. I just said, oh, you come went, on. Well, I would have, I would have nixed Sean, but uh, he's, he's a character, and like I told you earlier, he's... To watch these guys mature and grow over five years is really cool as a coach. It's one of the things I love about when you stay somewhere and spend time. And he, he came in a skinny little freshman and has a lot of issues up and down, but always working hard. And um, I'm, I'm excited about it and proud of him as well for his development because he's really matured into a, a great young man and really a leader, which is something I think that um, was a neat path to watch develop. Welcome back to you, Albany Football Weekly here on My Four. The defense over the last couple of years has had its share of injuries, but that has allowed players like our guest this week to get a little more time. And now even just as a redshirt sophomore, A.J. Missler has plenty of experience on the defensive side of the ball for the Great Danes. And he is the CAA Defensive Player of the Week. 5'11", 200-pound redshirt sophomore from Staten Island. Safety, but maybe more linebacker, A.J. Missler with us here on U Albany Football Weekly. A.J., it's good to see you, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the studio. You say you're more of a linebacker, but maybe in a safety's body. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. What is it about playing in the box and closer to the line of scrimmage that, that you're really good at? The, the coaching staff said, let's move him down a little bit. Yeah. Well, they said that when I was playing safety that I was like super aggressive coming downhill because I just want to be in all the action. So moving me down to linebacker moves me closer to the line of scrimmage. I have uh, less pass responsibility. Yep. Like at safety, you can't let anyone behind you. Uh, when you're playing linebacker, you know, like, oh, I got the safeties behind me, so I can be more aggressive. If I come downhill and I'm too aggressive, like sometimes I would do, then I'm, the safeties could always save me. You were aggressive last week. Nine tackles, a uh, sack, a forced fumble, major CAA uh, defensive player of the week. And we'll talk about, you know, your responsibilities this week. But what was it about your performance last week? What was it about defensively that made you so successful? I was just out there having fun, trying to win, as always. Just playing as hard as I can, trying to make plays, and it just worked out. And here's some of your highlights, man. I told you we'd, we'd show you a little bit of what you were doing. 41 on the field last week, get into the quarterback big time. Uh, this week with William and Mary, I know the quarterback 
is a major responsibility here of, of yours being a linebacker. What is it that makes this quarterback so good against, uh, on William and Mary? Well, he's a very good runner and he can pass, so he's a dual threat. We're really worried about him running, so they do a lot of like misdirection, and they have good running backs. Yep. So it's a lot of reads, so he'll make a read and he'll pull the ball, and he's shifty. So we just have to make sure we contain him. I mean, RPOs have taken over the sport of football. Um, it sounds like they're going to run a lot of kind of smoke screen stuff at you guys in a full game. Are you? Do you allow yourself some mistakes? How do you stay disciplined through the entirety of a game when you know everything you're seeing in front of you? may not be exactly what's what is about to transpire yeah well you just got to read your keys you got to stay patient if you make a mistake you can't let it like affect you you just got to get it out of your head and be like i got a lot more football to play can't make i made one mistake i just can't let it happen again the next play as you get ready for today's game against william and mary uh home game at casey stadium um what has the, been the message all week at practice aj about this being the conference opener do, do these games now just take on more meaning and importance and do you guys feel that yeah, well, every game is just as important, but CAA play is just like, it's so much different just because like the competition is always just so superb and like everyone's just good and uh, every week is a dogfight. So, I mean, we know it's CAA play and we're just, it just makes everyone so much more excited just because like it's going to be good football. I referenced it at the beginning of the segment here, but because of some of the injuries you guys have, have had to overcome as a defense the last couple of years, do you feel like you're more experienced than maybe just a redshirt sophomore would be in most other programs? Yeah, I'm definitely, I think I have a lot of experience just from last year. I started uh, six, seven games. So like that's already if you have six games, seven games starting a lot against a lot of CA opponents, then like I would say I have a lot of experience. Plus the four games this year, it's good. And now a scholarship player that you got in training camp, man. Congratulations on that. Uh, linebacker slash safety, AJ Missler with us here on New Albany Football Weekly. Weather should be good for today's game. For the forecast, here's Paul Cayano. Thanks, Chris. With the 3.30 kickoff, it's going to be a bit of a tricky forecast for our game time. It looks like we'll probably be dry at the start against uh, William & Mary, but it looks like uh, by late in the game, probably after halftime, as temperatures uh, climb up into the 70s, we'll probably have to introduce some showers. Certainly, if you're uh, doing some stuff post-game, you'll probably have to bring along the umbrella. A little bit of wet weather here uh, late in the day on Saturday. Chris. And a really good tailgate pregame to benefit the Real Men Wear Pink campaign. Thanks, Paul. When we come back, Coach Cattuso rejoins Roger with a complete scouting report on William and Mary. That's next right here on My Four. Coach, uh, William and Mary better than they were a year ago. How do you grade out William and Mary right now? Yeah, I, I think they are better than they were last year. I think that the new coach has, you know, Mike London's been around. Yeah. He's been a uh, won a national championship at Richmond. He's, he was the head coach of Virginia. He's a good football coach. He's a high motivator. They're, they're playing at a higher level right now than they were this time last year. But I also think we are as well, and I think it's going to be a really great matchup between two football teams that are trying to make a way in a tough conference. The freshman quarterback from Pittsburgh, Penn Hills, how good is he, and what kind of challenges will he present for your defense today? He presents challenges with his feet as well as his arm. I mean, he is multi-talented. A young guy like that that can get out and run, he's rushed for a lot of yards. It puts a lot of pressure on a defense, but we've got to make sure, you know, that we're real sound in our gaps and the things that we're trying to prepare to discourage him from running. And, but yet, um, one of the things that we're best at is rushing the quarterback, and we're going to go after him. We just have to make sure um, we're smart, we stay in our lanes, and we have people that can get him on the ground if he scrambles. But it's not just passing and running. It's, um, he's, a, he's an interesting uh, challenge for a defense and they have a second the other quarterback they kind of rotate um, he's, he's more of a passer but he's a very capable runner so they've got a pretty good tandem well coach good luck today I uh, wish you nothing but the best of luck and we'll do this again next week thanks Roger appreciate it that's head coach Greg Catuso and that will do it for this week's show for Chris Honorado and Ashley Miller I'm Roger Weiland so long everybody and good luck to the great dance Right, now you got three by 